Hello, everybody, and welcome to Reboot TV. This is Tuesday Talks. I'm Sheila Kilty, president and founder of the Optimal Health Reboot and the Mind Body Reboot Method. Tonight, we're going to be talking about leaky gut syndrome. It's something that's been very much out there. Dr. Gundry and Dr. Axe have both been very uh, vocal and informative about what's going on. And it's a big mimicker of a lot of other kinds of things that have you go into the doctor over and over and over again and never knowing what's really wrong with you. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, jump over to the show and to the slideshow and do the presentation. Afterwards, um, we'll be taking some questions. So stick around to the end. Thank you to my lovely Irma Robbins for joining us this evening live. Thank you. And if you're joining us um, in the replay, which will be up tomorrow, the next day, um, please go ahead and ask your questions in the comments like you've been doing. I answer every question. So if you're watching this and say, I think this, maybe that, is this okay? Is that okay? I answer all questions as soon as I get them. All right, let's head over. The presentation we're doing tonight is called Leaky Gut, the Silent Killer and How to Fix It for Good. I love things that are fixable. That always makes my day. So thanks for joining me tonight. We're going to be talking about leaky gut. It's known as a mysterious disorder. Not a lot of people know what it is. What is it? What causes it? What are the symptoms? How is it diagnosed? how to fix it for good. Quick disclaimer, this presentation is not to be construed as medical advice or a treatment plan and is intended for general education purposes only. The information in this presentation is not to be used for self-diagnosis or self-treatment of any health, medical, or physical condition. Don't use the information in this presentation to avoid going to your own healthcare professional or to replace the advice they give you. Consult your healthcare professional before implementing anything related to the presented materials herein. Myself, Sheila Kilty, the Mind Body Reboot Method, and the Optimal Health Reboot make no representations about the accuracy or suitability of this content for you. All right, that's out of the way. Well, let's get going. So, what is this mysterious disorder? A set of mysterious ailments that parody other ailments. It's been growing over the last 70 years or so, especially in the United States, and it parallels the obesity epidemic. So it is a metabolic problem in some way, but it's misdiagnosed as fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, lupus, irritable bowel disorders like Crohn's, food allergies, and a number of other things, migraines. And when you go to your doctor and you have a, a group of un, seemingly unrelated symptoms, there are a lot of catch-all diagnoses such as fibromyalgia or even lupus that are very much, if you don't match the exact criteria, the blood work of lupus, for instance, they give you a list of symptoms that it could be and they make their best guess about what it is. And then you go home and you're sent home with a whole cabinet full of dangerous pharmaceuticals that all have their side effects, things like corticosteroids and prednisone, anti-inflammatories, painkillers, opioids, and each one of those has dangerous side effects. And then you have medicines for your medicines. It's how I ended up taking 23 or 24 different medications at one point, because there were medicines for my medicines for my medicines. And you know what? You still don't get better. You're still sick. You're still going to the doctor saying, like this gal on, on the right here, it's like my stomach hurts. I don't know what's going on and they can find nothing wrong. So what is leaky gut? So this is a little, one of those pictures that you can find in the scientific books, but it best describes it. And this is, if you can see this animation right here, this is my mouse and I'm gonna be using it to point out some things. So on our gut, our intestinal wall, stretches along and it's all these little single cells that have the villi on them, the little hairs on them and everything. And they're only one cell thick, but they're very strong. And they all lock arms. They're like your security line so that all those toxins and things on the inside don't get to the outside. But what happens with leaky gut is molecules come along that punch a hole in it and work their way out 
dropping toxins into our bloodstream, our abdomen, our abdominal cavity, and into our entire bodies through our bloodstream. And that is known as permeability. So it's now it's got holes in it. Now it's now you're like a sieve. So when you have um, digestive tract permeability, you have intestinal permeability. That means now you have holes, literal holes that have been punched through this very thin wall that protects us. So the lining of the digestive tract, I said, is leaking, allowing dangerous toxins to sneak into the body and it wreaks havoc on every aspect of your health. And when you eat, when you eat in your stomach, food goes in and it's broken down into usable nutrients that are released back into the body and toxic waste is passed along and processes out through your feces. The problem is that the digestive tract is very long. If you cut it open and spread it out, it would be the size of a tennis court. It's very big, but it's very thin. As I said, it's only one cell thin. It's tough enough to keep things out mostly nothing gets through except lectins. And lectins are very good at destroying the gut lining. They're tiny little proteins that are found in certain foods that are not supposed to be in the body. And they're only found in vegetable and plant proteins. One very famous one that we all know about is gluten. Everybody accepts that some people are gluten intolerant. There are people with celiac disease that where they're allergic to glutens, they can't have their toxic to them. And glutens are found in wheat products and a, and a couple of, but generally in whole wheat. And everybody knows someone who's gluten intolerant, can't have the glutens and so forth, but that's that little protein like these little cells here, this gluten would be punching through and creating leaky gut syndrome. It's where all those gluten allergies, bloating in the stomach, diarrhea and constipation, headaches, swelling, inflammation, all those things that people who have gluten sensitivity have, causing irritable bowel, all those things are because Glutens are punching through and creating leaky gut. So we're all familiar with that whole gluten, everything. It's really taken off as a, an industry, the um, gluten-free world. But you can find um, lectins out there in whole grain wheat, in eggplants, tomatoes, and other things that are known as nightshades. We'll talk the, about them in a little bit. And these things like whole wheat, whole grain, whole seed, everything. They're supposed to be healthy foods. They've, we've been told they're healthy, but they are not. And one of the primary things that uh, nightshades, for instance, cause is chronic fatigue and people out of control fatigue. But we were told they were health foods, but they're supposed to be healthy. So think about what, like for instance, I was a, a vegan for around seven years or so, really making a valid attempt to sacrifice meat, which I loved, give it up. I was a gluten-free vegan, very limiting diet for a very long time. Now I did drop my first 50 or 60 pounds that way. I say 50 or 60, because it came back almost as soon as it went off, it came back. But at first it was a great, I felt good. I was losing weight. I was doing things, but with all of those lectins getting into my body, Beans and legumes are a big one. So think of the brown rice and beans that vegans have all the time being told that's the perfect food to eat, the perfect protein. It's all that hard brown shell that does this. It punches through. It's full of those lectins. And lectins are the poisons that are in a plant. All poisons on the planet are vegetable-based. Think about it. All the poisons that you know line the shelves of, of poisons are all like arsenic comes from almond oil raw almond oil ground down and distilled can also be a paralytic and paralyze people can make your your insides bleed to death from lectins 
punching holes all through your intestine, creating sepsis and you die. There's no poisons in, in animal product. There's bacteria, which can be dangerous, but lectins are purely a vegetable and vegetation and grain product, or byproduct, I should say. So our ancestors over here running around the caves, they didn't eat lectins. They didn't have grain. In 1492 ish, Columbus and the explorers came to the New World and brought back tomatoes, eggplants, and other nightshades to Europe. They didn't exist there before. Wheat, that's only 10,000 years ago. And that's, that's a second, that's like nothing in terms of, of human evolution and the time the humans been on the planet. That's only 10,000 years, nothing. But that's when we became an agrarian culture and started growing wheat which used to only be less than three feet tall. Well, in the 1950s, during the Eisenhower administration, they wanted to produce more wheat, thinking if we have more wheat, we can export more wheat, we could you know, really make us the bread basket of the world. I'm sure everybody's heard that the US is the bread basket of the world. And that's when we were gonna help with world hunger, we were gonna feed the world with our wheat. Well, they had, Better living through science, better living through chemistry. That was the big slogan. And uh, so they went out to the chemists and the people and they said, what can we do to create more wheat? So they created a type of wheat that's very tall. That's not the shorter green wheat that we used to have. And it's that very tall waving wheat that's all over the United States. Now the whole U.S. grows it. And none of the heritage wheat is around any longer. And that has far more protein in it. And the protein in wheat is gluten, which is a lectin. So way back when, when our ancestors planted 10,000 years ago and became an agrarian culture, a farming culture for crops, there was no whole wheat or dark husk of grains. It, it was known as being too difficult to digest. It was undesirable. The shaft of the wheat was tossed. They used very finely milled forms that were easier to digest, like the white bread of today without all the bleaching and everything, but they would take the brown husk off and it would be lighter bread because it was easier to digest. If not, people would get very sick. So now let's fast forward to the 1950s with our happy little 1950s family over here. And whole wheat in the 50s was declared a health food and it skyrocketed in its popularity. Also coming up as healthy was soy products. But also skyrocketing, interestingly enough, was the obesity epidemic. Since the 1950s, obesity has tripled. Diabetes is up 800%, eight times. And today, 70% of Americans are either overweight or obese. And in the pre-1950s, it was only 5% of Americans were obese. 10% were overweight or obese. It was very rare. And I don't think that that is any kind of coincidence that those two things are exact replicas of each other. So let's talk about the consequence of the permeability of the gut by lectins. It's not just the lectins that are leaking out. When there is this permeability, when there's a hole and stuff gets out, it's not just the lectin protein. It's all the other toxic waste, food particles, drugs you've had, pathogens. Your organs are malfunctioning because of it. Your stress is out of control. And all of this junk goes flying out into your system. You get immune system issues. You get autoimmune system issues. Your autoimmune system goes haywire trying to beat back everything that it sees as not supposing to be there. But this is what happens. So as you get more inflammation in the gut lining, in the GI tract, you get all that bloating and all those problems going on. 
it tears apart even more of those cells and breaks it down because inflammation breaks things down. So you have more holes and more holes and it builds on itself. So what causes it? So it's the conditions, environmental issues, and lifestyle choices that cause leaky gut syndrome. That's what LGS is there. So there's a genetic predisp uh, predisposition. Uh, we have a DNA test that I give clients. Um, anybody waiting for a DNA test, it is on its way to you. Um, but there's a sensitivity to environmental factors that trigger our bodies into an autoimmune response. I'd love it if the DNA test covered, if you have a predisposition for problem with lectins or leaky gut, but I'm sure it will be more standardized in the future as this comes to light. Could be poor diet, causing allergens that you're eating, inflammatory foods like grains, gluten, sugars, refined carbohydrates, genetically modified food, industrial and refined, refined seed oils, additives, processed foods, conventional low-fat dairy, feedlot meat products, super low-fat consumption, omega-6 to omega-3 ratios being off. I mean, it's every way that I have my clients not eat. I teach them about the opposite way of eating. So in an anti-inflammatory diet would be best. We'll get to what the recommendations are down the road. They're very interesting. But chronic stress can cause it. If your stress is out of control, it's going to cause a flare-up of leaky gut. But also a toxin overload that doesn't have to do with an actual you know, poison going into you. But if you have drug and alcohol abuse or you drink a little bit too much, and, and the hint is, if you think you drink a little bit too much, you drink a little bit too much. That's kind of the rule of thumb I've had in my life. But it could be drugs too, or it could be over-the-counter drugs that you just take so many to help beat back all. I mean, that could be part of the toxin overload in very well-meaning ways. Not that you're a drug addict, but that you're an over-the-counter drug user. And just because it's over-the-counter does not mean that it is safe. But there are 80,000 chemicals and toxins that we take in annually, 80,000 in our environment between our food, air, water, smoking, you know, whatever it is that we're doing, we're taking, or if we don't even smoke, it's just in the air, it's out there. Secondhand smoke, 80,000 chemicals, different chemicals and toxins. Pesticides, if you have fluoride in your tap water, if you get filtered water, make sure it's fluoride free. Fluoride, just so you know, was discovered in the lab because the teeth of the rats who were being given fluoride, which is a rat poison, were fantastic. The teeth were amazing. So they started doing experiments with how much fluoride was needed to make sure it didn't kill you, but gave you really good teeth. Growing up, we used to have little tablets of fluoride. We'd have to take after we brushed our teeth. They'd give us like a swig of it because it would, it would help us. It's in all the tap water in all the municipalities in the United States. But fluoride is rat poison. It is not required if you practice good hygiene and have low amounts of sugar and carbohydrates you take in and acids that you take in. There's other ways besides fluoride. So if you can avoid it, please do. We talked about over-the-counter painkillers like aspirin, especially, and NSAIDs, which are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like Advil. And if you overuse them, like say, it, it kind of builds on itself. So if you have aches and pains and fatigue and migraines and headaches from leaky gut and you take a lot of Advil to beat it back, all that Advil is also going to be punching holes through your gut. And aspirin, we're told to take aspirin as a protocol on a daily basis to thin our blood for heart disease. But the worst of all of the toxins you can put in your body that affects your gut, and as women, we're all very familiar with, with what antibiotics do, but antibiotics are bad. They kill the good, the bad, and the ugly, and everything in between when it comes to bacteria, in our, but they just scorched earth. They go in and kill everything, very broad spectrum kill it. You've heard of broad spectrum antibiotics. Well, it wipes out your entire 
gut mucosa of good and bad um, bacterium. So that'll be another talk on another day. I really like to do um, the over-the-counter and prescription medications and, and what they do and how to combat them. One specifically on antibiotics would be great. So let me know in the comments um, if you're watching this afterwards or DM me and let me know what topics you'd like to know about. If you've been to your doctor and they've told you something and you don't understand what it is or you feel they're not getting what you're talking about or you're confused about something or there's something you've heard on a TV show or a talk show and you're interested about it or you read something, let me know. I'm very curious. I love finding these things out and researching more and doing these presentations for you guys. So what are some of the consequences of leaky gut? There's a lot of them. Gastric ulcer, ulcers, infectious diarrhea, IBS, IBD, SIBO. SIBO is when your stomach growls like raw, 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 a lot. Like if you know someone who's, they used to call it talking tummy in our house, my mom, but talking tummy. Well, it's small intestine bacterial overgrowth. The wrong kind of bacteria grows out of control, usually is a reaction to antibiotics sometime a month or two before. And sometimes that doesn't come back online to be the ratio it's supposed to be, <clears throat> excuse me. And people end up having that talking tummy. Your small intestine just raw, 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 just talks all the time. Celiac, which is, you know, having a problem with gluten on a whole other level, esophageal or colorectal cancer, allergies, respiratory infections, acute inflammatory conditions, chronic inflammatory conditions like arthritis, thyroid problems, autoimmune disease, Parkinson's, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia. The biggie on here is it can cause can be a consequence of leaky gut. It can be ca a cause of leaky gut or coming from leaky gut, I should say, obesity and related metabolic disorders of non-alcoholic fatty liver, type two diabetes, heart disease. These can be consequences of leaky gut. When your system breaks down, it can cause you to be obese. It causes overweight. And one of the signs that you have leaky gut Remember I told you I became a vegan and I lost weight and then all the weight just popped right back on, even though I hadn't changed anything. And I said, I'd talk about it later. Ugh, talking about it later. One of the signs that you have leaky gut is if you drop weight from going anti-inflammatory and you're really working away and all of a sudden er, it comes to a screeching halt and your weight starts zooming back up again. I'm not talking like it's hard to lose weight. I'm talking all of a sudden, this car's going in reverse and you're getting on the scale every day. It's going up and up and up and up and you're obese all, all over again. That is a huge sign of leaky gut syndrome. And it's not your fault. I want you to hear this because a lot of people listening think they have a willpower problem or no one believes them that they're not overeating in a closet somewhere, that they don't have a box of hoo-hoos hidden someplace and they're just having a bunch of hostess cupcakes stored under their bed or something. It's not your fault. If you have leaky gut, it is really hard to lose, let alone maintain weight loss. So if you think any of this makes sense. If you've been told you have any of these problems, any number of these problems, I was told I had fibromyalgia, lupus, type two diabetes, um, arthritis and all kinds of arthritis. I had constant respiratory infections. I had organ uh, failure of uh, my liver and my uh, pancreas were both not very happy. I had SIBO, IBS gastric ulcers. I mean, you could go down this list and say, yep, Sheila had almost all of those. And I was almost morbidly obese, three pounds away from it. So this is real. This has real life consequences. So what are the symptoms? So here's the symptoms and the misdiagnoses. So food sensitivities, 
You have allergies all of a sudden, intolerances. You have IBD or IBS-like symptoms, um, ul ulcerative car uh, colitis, Crohn's, autoimmune disease, thyroid disorders. Your metabolism's impaired. You have fatigue, depression, weight gain, nutrient malabsorption, which is deficiencies including B12, magnesium, and digestive enzymes. Inflammatory skin conditions. As an adult, you can break out in acne or you break out in psoriasis. Never had that before. All of a sudden you got psoriasis. And that would also be psoriatic arthritis. But one that I find very interesting are the mood issues and the autism, the neurocognitive disorders that come into play with leaky gut. And you'd say, what does leaky gut have to do with what my neurocognitive capabilities are? But intestinal hyperpermeability, holes in your gut, triggers the release of pro-inflammatory cytokines and other chemicals that induce depression. And in autism studies, they find there's a super direct connection between the gut microbiome and autism. And it's established within the first year of life. That is fascinating that there is a connection they found. I can't wait to see what they find. But for a while, people have been saying, it's your gut, it's your gut. But people don't make the connection between gut and neurocognitive. How are those related? Also, other symptoms include low energy, bloating belly, belly fat, sugar and carb cravings, skin breaks, headaches and brain fog, and your moods all over the place. So doctors, they consider it somewhat a medical mystery you know, you come in and you're a medical mystery and you're sitting there and they're saying, oh, well, you know, could be this, could be that. Let's, let's treat the symptoms. And you're saying, but I want to treat the cause. And they're like, well, if we get your symptoms handled, then you're not going to be miserable. And if you're not miserable and you have your symptoms handled, you're good to go. I mean, why do you need to find a cause if, if you're handled? well, if I handle the cause, I don't have to take all these crazy medications and do all these interventions to beat back these symptoms. But it's a real gray area, this diagnosis. It's a judgment call. Currently, there is no test. And there are a lot of misdiagnoses for years until it's something that's so bad you have a massive hole you could drive a Buick through in your gut. And then they go, oh, yeah. You've got sepsis because you have this massive hole, and I'm sorry. Sometimes those small little permeations, they don't show up. And in the doctor's defense, there is no test. It does mimic a whole bunch of things. And they're left with dealing with the symptoms. But if this looks familiar to you, there's a protocol. So how do you treat and cure it? So there's the eat and don't eat list. It's very much like the eat and don't eat list for primal. Eat bone broth, raw cultured dairy, fermented vegetables, coconut products, sprouted seeds, omega-3 fatty acids, herbs, spices, nutrient dense, anti-inflammatory foods. The whole list It's everything that we do. ACV is apple cider vinegar. That's one to take it easy on, easy on, don't have a lot of it. It doesn't mean go out and pack yourself full of these things and make yourself sick. But look at the don't eat list first. And if you're a client of mine, you shouldn't have any of this in your world anyway. Sugar, conventionally grown produce, grains, especially whole, gra whole grains, glutens, legumes, conventionally processed low-fat dairy, unfermented soy, like edamame, the little soybeans alcohol, artificial sweeteners, processed foods, refined vegetable and seed oils. That's like canola oil or sunflower oil or safflower oil. Those are absolute omega-6 beasts and you don't want them anywhere near you. But if you eliminate these, 
move over to these. That's the number one way to beat this back because it's all about what you consume and what goes through your body. Now, there are some tests. Um, I will post this list of tests below the post for the video so that you can have this list. And if you go to your doctor, you can say, can you test my immunoglobulin G? That's, that's the um, part of your blood that goes up if you have an inflammation from a type of food that causes an allergy. So all those allergy tests are, are IgG tests, which stands for immunoglobulin G, just IgG food intolerance tests. They're all over the place. There's one that's called a comprehensive one that's very good. Um, but if you're thinking that you have some sensitivity, I found out my body is not sensitive to dairy like I thought it was, but it is very sensitive to almonds. So everything will intentionally, and it was causing all kinds of problems. But when they do a food intolerance test, they're testing for the um, spiked levels of IgG. So that's what that means. Stool test, which means you do a poop test. And there's ones that they can, you can take home and you can do it at home and it works as a colonoscopy too. Um, look at your organic acid vitamin mineral deficiency. So you look at the levels of where you are with all the different minerals, vitamins, and amino acids in your body. So this is a list of tests you can act, you ask your doctor to do, which will tell you if you're having the kind of lectin responses. And these are all about having lectin responses. And as a picture, that's something that someone like your doctor can look at and say, oh, okay, now I see a picture of what you're talking about. That together with your symptoms, let's try this protocol. Because again, it's not a drug. It's not something that you have to do. It has to do with being on a protocol. And the protocol is first you remove foods and factors of your lifestyle, stress and so forth, bad sleep. Sound familiar? It's very much like the primal program. It's very much like the mind body reboot method. Get rid of the things that are poisons, remove toxins, including toxic people from your life. Change your lifestyle on some things, clear out your pantry of all your bad stuff. Replace it with the good healing foods that are anti-inflammatory. That's week one for everybody who's on the program. That's what we do. If that's still, you know, working down the protocol, if removing those foods and lifestyle factors from your life, replacing it with good foods and good lifestyle factors, you can also repair the gut with some supplements of butyric acid. That needs to be done not just like running around, I'm just going to have some of some butyric acid. No, you need to go to your doctor and talk to them about that kind of supplementation. Then step four, the protocol, rebalance with probiotics and re-energize your epithelial cells with energy through those probiotics. But eating probiotics, getting them into your body is very difficult. Your gut kills them off before it makes it past the stomach all the hydrochloric acid in your stomach and makes its way through. And it barely gets even a drop of it gets through to your gut for the pre and probiotics. So there are probiotic foods that you can have, such as fermented foods that deliver them that way. So if you're, you're thinking of doing that, ask me about this protocol and it's something I would be happy to help you drive. So if the diet and lifestyle changes aren't working, and we talked about some other things you could do. Remember, you can get the IgG food intolerance test. You can take a look at your unhealthy health food things, check it again, like gluten-free foods, just making sure, avoid prepackaged foods, go deep with what you're getting rid of, those toxins. Any kind of unaddressed bad bacteria in your body, for instance, if your teeth are really bad, and it's producing tons of bacteria that can throw off the balance in your gut as well. And adding mega probiotics in fermented foods like sauerkraut, kimchi, and kombucha, things that we talked about. Now on a note about kombucha, P3 
people just drink that and drink that and they think it's fine. And it's been so popularized in Southern California. I moved up here from to Portland from Los Angeles a couple of years ago and people walked around drinking that stuff all the time. I found it disgusting. It tasted like drinking vinegar to me, but some people loved it. It's like drinking salad dressing. So a lot of the kombuchas, because they're very strong and they're very acid, they add sugar to them. So you're completely you know, taking away any of the good effects of the kombucha by putting sugars in it. So there's a lot of hidden product, additives, colorings, flavorings, all kinds of things in kombucha, just because it says kombucha does not mean that it's healthy or good for you. So read it. I do not know any good brands that I can recommend, but if someone's a big kombucha enthusiast, please do go ahead and post that for me. That would be great. So if you think you might have a leaky gut or you're having bloating or other symptoms, it's free to find out if the Optimal Health Reboot, this way of living that you know we've talked about during the presentation is good for you. A number of my clients, um, I believe, who had leaky gut, who never got it confirmed with their physicians, but they jumped on the protocol and they, they took it very seriously and changed how they ate and their lifestyle and their mind body health was rebooted and all of the signs of leaky gut went away. So good for them. Uh, you know, they're healthy, happy people with slim waists and no migraines. It really works out well when it works. So if you'd like to find out if this is something that might be good for you, it's free to find out, contact me. There's a link on the website that I have, which is optimalhealthreboot.com. Just go to find out if this is good for me and we will make a time to get together and do a strategy session and see what, if this, if, if this doesn't work well for you, I don't think it would work well for you or something. I'll let you know. I will make other recommendations in other places where you might be able to get some help. But if you are, hurting, if you are having any kind of chronic health challenges or pain or discomfort or bloating or difficulty losing weight, see somebody, if not me, then somebody. And having a partner or a coach or someone to do this journey with you really is pretty amazing. So we're going to head over, we're going to stop the share and head back over to our group Hello, Ms. Irma. Did you have any questions or anything that, that you wanted to ask or anything that was fuzzy? The only thing that really kind of stood out to me was the antibiotics being so bad. Yeah. Having joint replacements, I can't go to the dentist without a thousand milligrams of amoxicillin mm -hmm. an hour before. Yeah. I have a lot of metal in my body. I'm fused in... Uh, 12 or 13 different discs are fused and I have bars in my arms and everything. So every time I go to the dentist and I'm having some dentistry done, they want me to, to take the antibiotics and I sign off that I'm not doing that. I do an ADO, you know, against doctor's orders um, with them. Some dentists will say fine. Some will not. Um, but some people, even when they get their teeth cleaned, they want to make sure they take the antibiotics. And that's something that's being less and less common. But when you do have replacements, if you do have a transplant or some kind of artificial joint in your body, they do that because as you know, you know, you, I'm just saying this for other folks, you know this, but that your immune system goes nuts trying to fight off this foreign body and it never stops being a foreign body. So you have a heightened immune system and an autoimmune system can be unbalanced because of this replacement that you have. Your body kind of gets used to it, but it is forever this foreign thing that's in your body. So if you have a strong immune system, if you take care of yourself, if you have been eating primarily religiously and you've become metabolically healthy, there are a lot of other factors that are far more important than the antibiotics and the germs that are entering your body. And that is how healthy is your body to fight that off? So yeah. if you're having a lot of processed foods and you're morbidly obese and you have type two diabetes and heart disease because you're metabolically unhealthy, then yeah, you should probably take some antibiotics because 
you're not going to be able to fight that off when it comes into your body. But the bacteria that's in our teeth is always being swallowed by us. Every time we take a swallow of something, all the bacteria in our mouth goes right down our throat. It, we have it constantly all day as we swallow our saliva. So it's not like they're pouring bacteria into your mouth and making this happen. Now it might be more than your body's used to handling it once, but it's your own body that you're swallowing all the time, every day anyway. So I think it's very precautionary and it's good in 70% of Americans who are metabolically unhealthy probably should consider that. You have to say, you know, I don't want to get immunocompromised, right? But, and I don't want to have sepsis because my body freaks out with all this bacteria. I kind of give the same answer for the antibiotics. And I do that for myself. I sign off for the doctor and I say, I take care of, of hey, Dater, I take care of the, um, health that I have. And I, and I strengthen my immune system all the time, but I'm also on immunosuppressants, you know, for my lupus. And I'm hoping to get off those sometime soon. Fingers crossed. I'll be able to, I haven't been able to yet. I failed all those tests so far, but I, I was diagnosed three weeks ago with leaky gut. So I am living this whole protocol. And they're like, it was probably a lot worse at one point but it mm. takes up to 10 years to fix all the permeabilities. Yeah, and you're closing up millions of little holes that are only one cell wide, just one cell. Like you can't even see them. You can't take an image to see them. And not until they get to be big holes and you have sepsis is, is oh gee, look, there's a hole. But um, it's serious. When I heard about that, I was like, wow. And I did every one of those tests, failed every single one of them. Because when my lupus flares up, I put on 10 or 15 pounds like air, just, just put on weight. And it really is upsetting. But when I fast, for instance, one of the things I had, when you fast and autophagy happens, it heals those holes. The autophagy goes in and says, oh, that's not supposed to be there. Let's, let's patch that up. So, I'm so going does to be that doing... work with the intermittent fasting as well? Yes. Rather than your long-term fasting. At 16 hours, autophagy kicks in. So if you're up to 16 hours, you're getting ready for some serious intermittent fasting. Even if you go to 18.6 rather than 16.8, you just make that little two-hour mm -hmm. shift. Every single day, you're getting two hours of really big autophagy, not a little bit like boom, autophagy. And it'll bring those cytokines down. It'll bring all those pro-inflammatory factors. The IgG factors go down, that goes down. It also fixes the perme you know, the permeability. Those little holes get all patched up like they're supposed to be. And interestingly enough, what it sends to your gut to fix yourself is large puffy cell LDL. And I just thought back to the cholesterol thing I did a few weeks ago. It was like the big puffy cells go and patch up things in your body. So those big, beautiful puffies come along and go, okay, let's, let's paint over that. And it band-aids it up, but that's what happens during autophagy. Very good. Yeah. So that's, that's the kind of thing that would work if you're doing intermittent fasting and you want to move to an 186, um, where are you right now with, with your eating? Oh, window? I'm easy. 186. Good. Because I will eat lunch, breakfast, lunch between 1130 and 12. Mm -hmm. And then we have dinner 530. Mm -hmm. And then that's it. You know, I'll be done eating like at 545. So that's, that's six hours. So, you know, you have 18 on the back end of that. Yeah. Excellent. That's the easy way, by yeah. the way, to figure out your eating window. If you figure out your eating window, the fasting window will make itself yes. apparent because it adds up to 24 because people are going to say seven, eight, nine, 10. And they're like, <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, no. go back. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's algebra. Yeah. Go backward. Well, were there any symptoms of the leaky gut symptoms that I talked about that rang a bell for you in terms of something like, oh, that's something that's I've probably some of the irritable bowel, maybe mm -hmm. not that I have been diagnosed with it, 
but I have had symptoms of it mm-hmm. for a yes, long you time. You have, we've talked. About and it. Yeah. I, uh, I haven't had that much, you know, since I've been with you with the coaching, you well, know, once in a while. And that was the cream, the coffee. How did it go, by the way? I can't wait. To I can't you. stand coffee without my cream. Well, what about the lactose free half and half? Did you? This get- is still not that week that I can add it back. That's right. Well, you'll enjoy it twice as much when it comes to you this week. But Probably did you feel a big times. difference? Because I know you somewhat. Said, yeah, somewhat. I mean, I've, 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 I've felt a difference because like I haven't been able to get this dress on and I bought this last spring and Taylin says, why are you dressed up today? And it's like, it's not, this was a house dress that I bought. Yeah. Like a t-shirt you know? dress, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's cute. Yeah. I like it. I like it too. Thank Look you. Look at you showing off your collarbones and your arms and I your know. cute shoulders and your <laughs> skinny neck. You're just doing great. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's coming. It's, it's, a patience game Mm -hmm. and I do have to be patient because it's not falling off like my daughter-in-law's it doesn't have to it doesn't have to it's coming off she has not been overweight for as much time she's much younger she's very active and running around after these two little kids and working full-time but she's also working out every single day and she's mm-hmm. been doing this for 22 or 23 weeks. Yes. Yeah. And she's had many, many months that were three pound months. And then all of a sudden a big chunk will fall off. But the yeah. biggest thing that's happened uh, equally across the board for every client, everybody says, my gut has never been this happy. And when their gut is unhappy, when they're doing this, we can dig and find, oh, that's where some, like we did for the carrageenans for you. Yes, we did. And you would think that plain dairy would be plain dairy. Here's is dairy. And it wasn't. It was like, oh, was my not. goodness. What is this yes. thing? Yes. Yeah. I have noticed a lot. I mean, it's been a noticeable change with just that. But was there any right. other question on the leaky gut stuff that came to mind at all? Or you good? Well, I don't know as if I'm good, but, you know, it nightshades you hit on and you need to do a study on that for us okay because i definitely need some help with that and eggplant is not my favorite by any shade i don't care how you stack it but tomatoes we i have some tomatoes, tomatoes that i could eat my weight in every day they are so good yeah, you pick them right from your own garden. So that's a very special experience. I know that yes. sun warm tomato. It's great. Yes. But nightshades are a thing for a lot of people, not for other people. Yeah. Um, in addition to the DNA test that's coming to you, Irma, you may want to order the IgG uh, food sensitivity test if you're finding that. And I'll make I'll post some recommendations for who to go to for that. Okay because there's some companies that are good and some companies that aren't because they're not cheap. they are a couple hundred bucks to get them done, but they're there. The comprehensive one is pages and pages of things you'd never consider, but nightshades, it will tell you whether you have a problem with it or not. And all it means mm-hmm. is with nightshades, if you don't have the tomato skin, like if you steam it, get rid of the skin, you can still have the tomato inside. Maybe you don't have the seeds. Maybe you just have the flesh. You know, there's all different ways around it. A lot of ways to cut this tomato it's a trade-off you need to know it like is. where's where's your threshold too maybe you don't right. eat your weight in ratatouille you know right. maybe you have some <laughs> not all you know, some i know yeah and um so that's what those tests are good for too because why eliminate something that doesn't have to be eliminated that's true you know, some people go True. nuts with these elimination diets and those take for take six months to do a proper elimination diet. And that's just nuts. Get the test. Yeah. But yeah. I will post some recommends on that. I will do, I'll okay. take your advice and do a whole thing on nightshades. That might be good. Well, I'm just picking up on your advice because you said you were going to do that because it was a very important study. Yes, it is. 
So nightshades, wonderful. I love suggestions. I have a, a list and that's on there. I'll move it to the top. And the come cook with me at some time, we'll do coffee drinks. That would be fun. I think that would be good. That'd be a blast, huh? It would. Great. Well, thank you for spending this time with me. And for everybody on replay, hello. Thank you for joining Irma and myself. And that's all for tonight on Reboot TV with Tuesday Talks. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.